as always, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys, and I'm glad you're here. I'm excited, actually, to come on here and teach because it's been a little bit since I've come on here and actually been able to bring you guys a deep teaching that I believe is going to help you tremendously. I really do. I believe this one is going to help increase your discernment and help the way that you, um, how would I say, come against the enemy. Because I see a lot of Christians that do things, I don't want to say in error, but do things kind of the wrong way, and they do it just because they're new and, you know, they just don't understand. And that's why we come on and we teach these things so there can be proper understanding and we stay in our spiritual, watch this, jurisdiction. But before I jump in to this teaching, I want to get the views up, guys. So let's go ahead and like the broadcast. If you have not liked the broadcast, go ahead and do that wherever you're tuned in on. If you're on YouTube, smash that like button. If you're on Facebook, smash that like button. And also share, share, share. I want us to break, let's try to break over 1,500 live today. Right now we're sitting at 421 as I'm looking at you guys. Let's go ahead and let's continue to press that like button and to share. The reason I'll say this throughout the broadcast uh, while we're live is that's the way that we get more live viewers. More live viewers mean more people hear the good news of Jesus Christ. They get to hear the gospel and they get to hear deep spiritual truth uh, that only comes from the gospel. So this is a hangout time. I get to hang out with you guys. I get to enjoy you and uh, get to enjoy Jesus with you also. So nothing better than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All right, guys, right now I'm looking. We only are at 126 likes. Come on, let's smash that like button. That means if there's right now on YouTube, there's 243 watching, hit that like button. Let's go ahead and get these likes high, guys, so that the the YouTube algorithm will recommend this live stream. So let's go ahead and push them likes up, guys. Amen. Okay. This is going to be a good one because I'm going to actually talk about dealing, how to deal appropriately with spiritual principalities. And just to let you guys know, I'm not talking about the principalities within a person. Okay. So I'm not going to be, because we know when we deal with the casting out of demons, that there's multiple demons in people. And if you've been in the old, I call it the old school way of deliverance, you know that multiple demons show up in people. And there's something in a person that's called a prince demon that is the prince of the kingdom of demons that it is over. Uh, I've changed my approach over the years. And also as grace has increased in my life, you, you'll notice that I don't do things like I used to do it because the Lord has led me from glory to glory and faith to faith. But for you guys who are starting out in deliverance for the first time, or you're newer to it, or you haven't, you know, you're, you're maturing, I would, say, I would say, you're going to run into situations in people that there are spiritual principalities within them that rule over a certain um, dominion, uh, have dominion over a legion of demons, I would say. You know, when you see the man at the gatherings, it said, my name, our name is Legion, for we are many. So that means there was thousands of demons, but over those thousands of demons, the ruling demon was the one who was speaking, and Jesus got that one out the way. So all that legion of demons come out of that man and went into the uh, herd of pigs, okay? But also, I just want to put this out front. Giving links are in the stream, so if you want to sow in because you're being taught some good stuff, you know, they say sow where you grow, you can do that. If you want to be a part of the ministry, you want to be a forerunner, you can go to the Supernatural Life. Org. If you want to know where I'm going to be, I'm about to go to Europe for three weeks, okay? So you guys out there in Holland, in Germany, in the UK, in Ireland, I look forward to being with you guys. I know some of you people, some of you guys in the future will be tuning into this and you'll be like, oh, this is already passed. Just go ahead and fast forward to the teaching part. But for you guys that are on here uh, live, this is where I'm going to be. But you can always find out where I'm going to be by going to the supernaturallife.org and click on events. Also, remember, we have the TSNL Forerunner Cruise that will be coming up, um, which is a, just a big, big retreat for all forerunners that want to be involved. You can also find out the information on that on the supernaturallife.org. That's booking up pretty fast. We only have so many rooms. Maybe they'll extend the rooms if we have more people signing up. So just go on there, sign up, get your room reserved, and we're going to have a good time on that cruise ship. And it doesn't matter where you live as long as 
is you can get to the port, you can go with us. That means people that are even in the nations. But I want to come on here and I want to, I'm, I'm, I see the chat. I want to let you guys know that I see the chat. You guys see the chat also on the screen. Um, I'll look at it here and there, but I'm not going to try to get too distracted because I'm here to teach tonight. I'm here to teach uh, what God has put on my heart. So remember, I'm not going to be talking about principalities within a person. I'm talking about the principalities today that are open up in the second heaven that are ru ruling over localities, over locales, over regions, uh, over nations. So yes, there are principalities. There are falling, fallen angels that actually sit above regions. Uh, let me give you an example. Let me pray real quick. Father, I thank you for this teaching. I thank you that you're going to encourage us all by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one teaching. Psalms 81.10 says, open your mouth and I will fill it. I am opening my mouth and I'm believing Holy Spirit. You're filling it for the edification of the body of Christ. So Lord Jesus, we just thank you right now that you will be glorified. So have your place on this live stream in Jesus name. Remember, if you're just tuning in, smash that like button and share, share, share. So I'm going to talk about spiritual principalities in the second heavens. Okay. The ones that are ruling over cities and regions and things. I'm going to actually use scripture to show you that this is very much a biblical thing. Okay. Um, as a matter of fact, before I do so, let's go you see got the word. We got to have the word, right? Let's look in Daniel 10 and let's read verse 13 really quick. Daniel 10, 13, Daniel 10, 13 says, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me. Now, this is the angel that was coming to deliver the message uh, to Daniel. They say his name is Gabriel. Of course, he, he always shows up throughout the Bible. We do know Gabriel did visit Daniel. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes. OK, so Michael is a prince. Uh, in the kingdom of heaven, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to the people in the latter days, for the vision refers to many days yet to come. So the angel was bringing information to Daniel and was being withstood in the second heavens as they were, he was delivering um, that message by the prince of Persia, that ruling demonic force over Persia. And then Michael steps in. Michael's a bad, bad angel. You know what I'm saying? In a good way. Bad in a good way. He's a, he's a, he's a tough dude. He came in and handled business. And the messenger angel was able to come through and bring the message that was needed. So there is spiritual warfare, even to this day, between the angel in the angelic realm, uh, that is still happening in the second heavens. There is a war that is going on between good and evil. We can see that. Now, the prince of Persia was, was the prince that was that prince ruling angel that was in the second heavens that was ruling and causing a bunch, they, causing all the stuff that was going on at that time. We know Daniel was having some trouble. If you read the book of Daniel, you'll see he, he, he's, he has, he had been under quite a few, couple kings, I believe. And uh, we see where he was up against. So we know that he was fighting against spiritual warfare. And um, anyway, when we're dealing with spiritual principalities over areas, I want to show you how you'll get an idea of what that what that principality, that principality's job is. We're talking about a demonic spiritual principality. So if I go down the road here, a couple hour, an hour and a half away and down into Orlando, if I go down there and I go to the worst street called OBT, what is big on the street of Orange Blossom Trail? They, they call it one of the worst streets in, in Orlando, Florida. You'll see prostitution. You'll see homelessness. You'll see addiction. You will see uh, these really ra ratchet strip clubs. You'll see uh, Muslim-owned facilities. Uh, you just see a lot of people that are being trafficked and everything. So that street is... It's a pretty bad street. So there's a principality that is ruling over that area called Orange Blossom Trail that has taken what was meant to be a road filled with orange blossom trees and having much life. If you look at the old pictures, you'll see that that area used to be very family friendly, had a lot of life. But what happened is a principality came in. And if you know anything about Orlando, I'm not going to talk too much about that because it can get me in trouble on social media. But if you research it, you'll see what comes into Orlando a lot. Uh, you'll, you'll know 
what has brought that in. Let's just put it this way. It's a lot of perversion. Okay. And that perverse spirit has brought a lot of perverse things. And witchcraft is also very prevalent uh, in the Orlando area. I mean, it's called magic, it's the magic city, right? It's, it's Disney, all that stuff. But anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to go too deep into that. You guys that know anything about the city of Orlando, Kissimmee, Florida and all that, you'll be, able, you'll know what I'm talking about, but that street is horrible. I worked on that street in a minute with a ministry for three years. I was on that street. I was feeding the homeless. I was dealing with uh, setting people free, dealing with the pimps and the prostitutes and all that stuff. I dealt with that often. So I was coming up against that principality. Now, let me tell you this. Here's the thing, guys. When you, when you are dealing with spiritual principalities, you will have some people that will teach you this. They will say, it's our job to go into the heavenlies. I'm telling you, there's people that teach this through intercession. So really what they're saying is you are going in your spirit into the heavenlies to deal with these principalities. There is nowhere in the Bible that you will see a human being given jurisdiction to go into the second heavens and deal with a fallen angel or principality over an area. That is not the human's job. That is not the redeemed man's job, okay? The second heaven battles, this is going to help somebody today, is for God's angels. God's angels handle that warfare, okay? I'm not here for agreement. You don't have to agree with what I'm saying, but I'm here to tell you what I have seen and what I know and what has worked for me, okay? I know that this is a touchy subject and some of the intercessors and some of the prophetic people are going to be like, no, I go up there and I you know, I go up there and I astral project up there, pretty much what they're saying. And I just go and fight the angels with my spiritual suit on and the full armor of God and all these things. Nowhere. Show me where, where do you see that that happens? Where have you, where do you see that other than Jesus Christ himself, right? Where do you see that somebody a person has is going up there and handling business. You don't. You see the angels coming, and they're doing the warfare, and they're doing them things. I'll give you an example of what the second heaven warfare is like. If I'm going to deal with a principality, watch this. I'm, lo- I'm going to map out the area. I'm going to say, okay, there is a area that is riddled with addiction. This would be my prayer. Father, prepare me as I go into this area. Let me know for sure that you are sending me into this place to be a ambassador of the kingdom of God and to bring light into the darkness. Lord, I pray that you will dispatch. Listen, listen. I pray that you will dispatch your angels. I pray that you will dispatch your angels to deal with the principalities over that air, over these areas so that we can go forth in the flesh And go cast the demons out of the people and out of the areas so that your redeeming power can come upon it and it can become fruitful land once again. So, Lord, I pray you dispatch those angels, your warrior angels, to do the work that they are called to do so that I can go forward and do and be commissioned to do what I need to do. Our jurisdiction is upon this earth. Our jurisdiction is to set the captives free. Commission the uh, the Great Commission. Mark 16, 15 through 18. Okay? Listen. Heal the sick. Cast out demons. Raise the dead. Matthew 10, 8 actually. Raise the dead. Freely you have received. Freely give. Right? Uh, Preach the gospel to all creation. Baptizing them so that they can avoid condemnation. And then baptizing them in water and baptizing them in the Holy Spirit. That is our job. When we go do this stuff, then we cause the atmosphere to change We cause the dynamic of what's going on to an area to shift. And the angels actually, by us going into the area, the warfare that's already happening, as we remove the foot soldiers out of the people, what do you think happens in the heavenlies? That principality starts to lose its foothold, lose lose its strength, and now the region starts to change and become fruitful again. That's why what happens is you send in evangelists first, right? So if you have an apostolic mindset, you're going to know what I'm saying today. 
if you have an app, it, it, what will happen is if you're an evangelist, you get sent in. You're that infantry. I'll call the evangelist the infantry. Evangelists are sent in to scope out the land. Joshua and Caleb sent in to scope out the land, see what's going on, start to operate in signs, wonders, and miracles, get people saved. And then the apostles, the apostle will come behind and establish something in that area that will cause something to become fruitful. Right after the apostle, usually the prophet will come on the scene to point direction of where they need to go from here on out. Then you'll have the pastor to nurture the people as they come in. And then you'll have the teacher will come and lay down a scriptural foundation for everybody to stand on. Did you just hear what I said? I just gave you five-fold ministry. Pray about what's going on in the area. Ask the Lord to dispatch his angels, and then we go in and we do our part. Somebody said spiritual mapping on here. That's kind of kind of what it is. So you go in there, you spiritual, you map out the area like the military would do if they're coming against an enemy, and then you go and you you go straight into spiritual warfare and you do what you're supposed to do. I want to tell you this: a lot of times, a lot of time, Christians step into a territory that they were never called into, and they end up in some of the most intense warfare. I'll tell you guys a testimony of my life. There was one time I had things in my life, and I was sitting in my office, and I told, I told the enemy, I, told, I, told, I actually said in the spirit to Satan himself, I said, I'm coming for you, I'm going to stop you, you can't have my family. Let me tell you something, I did not, I did not have jurisdiction in the spirit to go against the, 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 the king of hell. Okay. I didn't have the jurist. And what happened is see, I had a lot of holes and places in my life. I didn't have a proper covering. I didn't have anything to protect me. And I got a big old spiritual uppercut. Also, you want to be a, what I call a sent one. You want to make sure that you're in a ministry that can send you. As you guys know, I have forerunners here. I send forerunners to places. The, you know, I'll send them to a, a place. They'll come help me in places. They're sent ones. I send the forerunners to forerun. I have evangelists in this ministry that I'll send the evangelist here in the very near future to go and break ground and do things like that. So, th so I know I know what it takes when it comes to this stuff. But some people. Some people will step over their jurisdiction. They will step outside of their means. They will challenge the enemy in ways that they are not prepared to challenge the enemy. God has not prepared them for certain assignments. And in their zeal and their pride, they jump ahead. And I'm here to tell you, there is people who have died prematurely going into places they had no business going because the Holy Spirit did not send them. And actually, the Holy Spirit sent warnings, I'm sure. Paul said, I wanted to go into Asia, but the Holy Spirit would not allow me to go into Asia. Paul, in his will, could have probably went against that. But he recognized the Holy Spirit was saying, hey, hold up, calm down. This is not for you right now. You, there's people set up to take you out. So many times people become martyrs for the wrong reasons. I'm not saying that dying for Christ is not a glorious thing, but you don't have to die if you don't have to. I mean, die that way. Not everybody's called to be a martyr, okay? Some people need to stay here and equip the body of Christ. Some people are called to do certain things. Some people are called to die for the gospel. I mean, Jesus told the disciples, all y'all dying but one, and that one did not die until old age got him. But you see what I'm saying? Some people got even theories about that, but that's a whole that's a whole nother story. But you don't have to become a martyr. You don't you don't you don't have to do that. You don't have to step over your uh, your your jurisdiction in the spirit. If you are a brand new beginner and you know nothing to get about about spiritual warfare, nothing about the gospel. Why would you go into a witchcraft shop and try to cause problems? Some people be like, oh, grace and all that. No, that's not wisdom. There's, there's something called wisdom there. I've seen so many people, and including myself in the past, mess up because of zeal. And I look back and I say to myself sometimes, how in the world am I alive? I really think that's, I'm like, man, how did I come out of that situation the way I come out of it? It's crazy. But anyway, 
We need to make sure that we have spiritual jurisdiction when we go into a place. Now, there's teachings out there that will say, just go. God's always with you. God's always with you. Just go, 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 go. No, that's not wisdom. And I know some preachers and some pastors and stuff like that, they teach this stuff. But I would tell you to make sure you you consult with the Holy Spirit and you consult with those who mentor you and cover you to make sure that you are going into a place that you're actually supposed to go into. Okay? You don't need to take on warfare that's not yours. You don't have to take on battles that are unnecessary. It, you know, some people will go into the weirdest places just so that they can be famous on this earth. Did you catch that? Meaning that they want to show they want to show people that I'll do it, but God never told them to do it. God's saying your character's not ready, and I'm not drawing men unto you. You're supposed to draw men unto me. So a lot of times people in their zeal step over their spiritual jurisdiction. Us going and pray and saying, I'm going to go into there and I'm going to talk to that principality. I see people, I'm talking to this principality. You listen to me right now. My name is so-and-so. I'm anointed by God. That Listen, okay. Now you are challenging a fallen, you are challenging a fallen one. You are saying that you, you, you know, in your, in your arrogance, you could be saying in pride and that angel goes, okay. And next thing you know. And next thing you know, spiritual warfare has come up on you in a way that you have never seen before. And you're wondering, you so you're coming against the principality of perversion and lust over an area. And the next thing you know, you're wondering why you're under this hardcore warfare of you don't even deal with this stuff. And all of a sudden it's attacking you. I'm speaking to somebody. I know I am. it's hitting you upside your head. You went to challenge the big man in the heavenlies that you did that had nothing to do with you. You could have just easily prayed with with um in the name of Jesus to to for God to send the angels to do the warfare. Why do we have to why we we don't have to do that? You you don't have to go on up there and do the thing. Hey, if you guys are surviving and you're doing it, please by all means teach your boy. I'll, I'll learn, all right? If I'm in error in what I'm saying, by all means, please go ahead and just tell me. But I ain't, why would I go fight that thing up there? I, I, I got enough on the ground to handle. I got enough that's in, in my face. There's too many people infested with demons that come from the principalities that are over the area that I need to be dealing with. Some people would say, well, if you get the principality, no, because then a demon will replace it. Let's get the, let's, let's go ahead and clear the land. What did Joshua and Caleb do? They saw they saw what was going on in the land. They reported back to their covering, Moses, what they saw. And they said, we can take them on because God is with us. And Moses and them said, go ahead, let's do it. Went into the land flowing with milk and honey and took on the giants and took them out, wiped them out. And then the land became fruitful. And they had the land that was flowing, the promised land that was flowing with milk and honey. So that's just... That's just something to think about. That's something to, that's something to think about. You don't want to go up into the heavens and I'm going to go on up there and I'm, I'm going to get in my chariot and I'm going to go handle business. Man, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, that is, you got to use wisdom. You got to use wisdom. Handle what's on the ground. Handle what's on the ground. Don't worry about what's going on up there. You pray to the God, to, to, you pray to Father God. Send those warrior angels to fight. As I'm out here and I'm doing the groundwork, those angels will be up there clearing the way for you as you go. Are there not ministering spirits sent to those who, who inherit salvation? I think there's somewhere in Hebrews that says that. Those angels are there for you. Angels are here to assist us in spiritual things, okay? So, this is how you, pro you should properly do it. Now, I'm going to give you five ways to deal with spiritual principalities according to the Bible in the second heaven. You want to know how to deal with them? Let's go over here and let's look at it real fast. Let me switch it over. Okay, so this is my notes screen right here, guys, that I made. Um, I, I, I made it as big as I can. I hope you guys can see it. I will have these scriptures in uh, in the description of, of the chat and, and on Facebook and on YouTube. So you guys will be able to go back and, and re-look at this. But here are five ways to deal with spiritual principalities. I should have put in the second heavens according to the Bible. What did I say? One, pray. Now listen. Number one, pray. 
Prayer is a powerful, a powerful weapon against spiritual principalities, even the ones in people. Ephesians 6.12 says this, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the he heavenly realms. Prayer can help us overcome these forces. That's what I was telling you. Prayer. Father. Send the angels, handle business. Here's another one. You ready? Submit yourself to God. James 4, 7. We are instructed to submit ourselves, submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil. Resist him. Keep pushing and he will flee from you. When we submit ourselves to God, we can resist the devil and his forces, his principalities. This means surrendering our lives and decisions to God's will. This is so that you are in, in place where you're supposed to be when you're coming against spiritual principalities, dark forces, the devil. Okay, when you submit yourself to God, you become a, uh, you become a pretty strong uh, force for the kingdom of God. Amen. Submit. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Number three, you guys, this is a really good one, okay? All power and authority is held in this name. Use the name of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus, guys, is a powerful tool against spiritual principalities. Philippians 2, 10 to 11 says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Ah, that's good, right? And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. We call upon the name of Jesus in moments of spiritual warfare. When you are dealing with principalities, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I ask you, send your warrior angels to deal with these principalities. You say anything I ask in your name. According to your will, you will do it. This is according to your will that this land will be taken back in this city, in this nation, in this state. This is the will of the Lord, that these people will prosper and become everything that they're supposed to become. And Lord Jesus, that's only going to happen if we come and we do the things on the ground that we're supposed to do. So Lord, we ask you right now, in Jesus' name, send those angels. Amen. Number four, put on the armor of God. You got to put it on, guys. Ephesians 6, 11. If you don't have the armor of God, here's what I'm going to tell you. If you don't have the armor of God when you're going in to deal with areas you, and these principalities and things like that, the one thing that you can guarantee you're going you're gonna to avoid a lot of attacks is if you're coming with the armor of God. Ephesians 6, 11 says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. The armor of God includes the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of of the spirit. We must daily put on the armor in order to protect ourselves from spiritual attacks. As we're doing war against uh, against the areas where these spiritual principalities are located, we must go with this truth. In Ephesians 6, 11, we must carry all of these things that, that is contained in the armor of God so that we can go in Full frontal assault. You understand? The armor is forward facing. Full frontal assault. It's a front moving kingdom. So we're moving forward. We are on the offensive when we come in against the enemy's camp. Amen. So when you put the full armor of God and you're coming against those spiritual principalities uh, by being a soldier here on the earth, this is going to protect you from the attacks that come with trying to take the land back from the enemy or again from that principality. Okay, number five, walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Also, if you're just tuning in, guys, or you're watching this for the first time, smash the like button. Everybody watching right now, smash that like button and share, share, share. Come on, let's break, let's break this 1,000 threshold. We're, all, we're at 919. Let's break it. Number five, walk in the Spirit. Galatians 5, 16 to... 17 says, so I say, walk by the spirit and I will not gratify the desires of the flesh. We talked about people getting in that zeal, right? For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. When we walk in the spirit, we will overcome the desires of our flesh and the spiritual 
principalities that seek to harm us. This includes reading the Bible, meditating on God's word, and walking in obedience to him. When you walk by the spirit of the Lord, you will walk and be led by the, you, you'll be led by the spirit. When you're walking by the spirit, you're listening to the spirit, you're being led by the spirit. Nothing can harm you because you're going to do what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do. You're going to go in and take land and take over for the kingdom of God. And you're going to be successful in it because you're not being led by your fleshly desires. Remember what I was talking about earlier. I was saying, I was saying that people sometimes go over their jurisdiction, meaning they step over their jurisdiction because they're doing it in the flesh. And this is when the attacks come. This is when the pain comes. This is when the things happen that don't need to happen. Okay. Remember the bat, the second heavens is not your battle. That is the angels battle. That is, that's for God to handle through his angelic armies. Yours is on the earth. Take dominion of the earth. Know your identity. Know who you are. Let me switch over. Know who you are so that as you are walking on the earth, you are taking dominion. He told Adam and Eve, take dominion of the earth. Well, we now have been given that back through Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection and accepting the free gift of salvation and it being filled with his Holy Spirit. We can now come and take dominion over the areas that the enemy thinks that he has. When we walk, we make the ground holy. And the enemy knows that when we walk in the light of Christ, the truth of Christ, the lies and the darkness must flee. So when we take territory for the kingdom of God, we push back the things that are happening in the heavenlies. Now, I remember reading uh, a, a, while, a while back, one of God's generals, John Alexander Dowie had something in the Chicago area. I think it was called Zion City. And it was a, such a healing anointing on his life that it cleared out the hospitals. That means he removed the spiritual principality of infirmity from the land. And he was able to allow the kingdom of God to bring healing to the people. There was no need for anything else. They had exactly what they needed by the great physician. Amen. But what happened later on is we know some things took place and that kind of fell apart. It doesn't take a rocket scientist. A blind prophet can look at a city or look at a town or look at a region, and you can see what's ruling that region. I can talk to you about America right now, and I can tell you pretty much what principality is ruling our land. Let's just say that Baal is trying to make his way into the land of America, and he's trying to set up his kingdom so that he can drop us to the ground and the Antichrist agenda can move forward. So if somebody wants to know what we're probably fighting here, it's probably that. He's probably the big one. And we look back in the Bible and we say he's, he's always been doing the same thing. There's nothing new under the sun. The same thing, just looking a little different, okay? We see what he's trying to do. So, and then we see the people in power. We see Jezebel and Ahab relationship, amen? So we got to pray that the Lord will do business in the second heavens so that we can continue to push the gospel in this great land called America. Amen. We need the, the church of Jesus Christ to stand up and to do what, it, do what it's supposed to do. Now, here's something I don't quite get. Are you ready for this? If you're a pastor watching this, this might help you. All right, go ahead and buckle your seat. Well, unbuckle your seatbelt and get ready. If there is a church in the land by the way hit the like button if you haven't hit the like button yet if there is a church in the land and the land is not changing if that church has been there for 10 years and everything around the, the church is still the same or is that church really called to be there think about this when somebody is called to a region or an area you will see increase. You will see fruit. There's many pastors. There's many pastors that set up shop in regions and in areas they were never called to. You hear that? And that's why they lack seeing the fruitfulness they need to see. I'm not saying a small church is a bad thing. I've seen many small churches that cause big results, meaning 50 or more. It ain't about size. It's about power. 
what kind of power is the church carrying? This ain't always about the numbers. We saw 300 took them out, right? Gideon and the 300 took them out. But my thing is even mega churches. I see me we have mega churches even here in Florida, all over the place. Big churches, lots of people, zero power. The jail's still full of people right down the road. If a church is actually doing and a pastor is really called to an area, you will probably within a five year span, if less, no more than five years, you should start seeing some forward movement and some progress happening. Unless the pastor was called there and fell into mess and the devil got him and then God has to come bring somebody else to take the place or the person was never called to that area. They came in zeal. They saw a need and they thought they could meet that need, but God didn't call them to that need. They might be on this street, but watch this. They're also supposed to be, they're really supposed to be called to the next street over. Did you catch that? It is very important. One that we're sent, but number two, we know where we're placing down is where we're going to go and take territory for the kingdom of God. You're, you will know that you know that you know there will be confirmation after confirmation after confirmation. Amen. There will always be fruitfulness if you're placed where you need to be. What I see sometimes is people. Now, look, this is this would be a little tough. OK, and I'm, I'm speaking because I've experienced this. I have done things outside of what I was called to do. I was trying to do things that I was not called to do. And I have seen here in Orlando, Florida, big names plant places and plant things and get moved out because they were trying to do something or lose their families, lose their, I mean, go through divorces. I'm not saying people can't come back and do, do better the next time and do it right. But I've seen people, they go and they come into a jurisdiction they didn't pray about. They did it out of zeal. They did it out of the flesh, even though they were real big names and they thought that they were doing something right. Guess what? They get hit. Their wife leaves them. Their husband leaves them. The children go crazy because they're outside of their spiritual jurisdiction. And that spiritual principality gets word and he knows it. He'll go, Jesus, I know the man that was here before I know. But who are you? How are you in this area? Nobody called you seven sons of Sceva to come cast me out. Nobody called you to come and, and take over. Nobody called you to do that. I don't see the markings of God on you. I don't see the authority that God has given you to, to for you to be the one to come. Start So all the challenges start coming and all these things start happening. And next thing you know, things are wiped out. That's why you need, before you place something down, to be in prayer, to make sure confirmation is there, and know that you are the one that is called to cause the change in that area. Another thing, you will not be called by yourself. Somebody needed to hear this right now. You will not be called by yourself. You will, if you go into an area, the co-workers will come around you and they will not be people that are there for the wrong reasons. They will come to serve and they will stand by your side because God has also told them that they're supposed to be there. They won't be over there for an opportunity. They will be there. Oh, this is good stuff. Somebody really needs to hear this. They will be there because they know that they were also called by the same God to stand beside you. And they aren't there for position. I'll tell you something. I pastored for a little while. I've seen both sides. I've seen the people that come positional opportunists and they will stab you in the back and they'll walk away. And then I've seen the people when I'm doing the right thing, they come, they stand by your side. They have no agenda. They have no ill will. They're just like, God has called me here. I'm here to do exactly what God has showed me to do. And I'm here for the long run. Let's fight the fight and let's see this place change. And if the man of God or woman of God that you're serving is right, then guess what? It's going to go really good and you're going to see the change and you're going to see families restored. You're going to see healing to bodies. You're going to see did things come to life. You're going to have stories to write about because you're going to see so much fruit happening because you are in the right place. The spiritual principality in the second heavens won't be able to send the foot soldiers to stop you. I was praying for uh, a man one day a while back that was part of a church. And uh, this is my early days. This is about 2016. And uh, excuse me, 
<clears throat> I was I was praying for him, and the demon spoke out, and the demon starts laughing, right? And I'm casting the demon out, and as the demon's coming out of the boy, he said, "Hey, Daniel, I want to tell you something." I said, "I said you don't need to talk to me. You need to come out of the boy." No, no, no. Let me say this: There's no roof over this house. I said, "What? There's no roof over this house, and it's about to rain." And the demon left the boy. He left. That demon knew that that house was not covered and the assignment was out of, out of whack. And guess what? It rained. Trust me, it rained and everything changed. So I remember that, man. I remember that. So the demons know. Demons even know. They know who's sent. They know who's who. You have people out here calling themselves apostles. You have people calling themselves prophets. You have people calling themselves evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And that's just not what they are. I hope the fear of God is coming in somebody's heart today. And you will really seek God and find out who you are in the spirit. Stop calling yourself something that you're not. Stop calling yourself that. You see everybody re recently, all the people, the pro you know, my brother, my, the great man of God, Prophet Lovey, and other people. Um, uh, prophet Leon, uh, awesome man of God. These prophets are confirming the call of my life. I've always known I have an apostolic uh, mantle. I just, I don't, I don't, didn't gloat it around. Now people start speaking what's on your life. So I'm doing an apostolic work, but it's natural to me because I have been called to be an apostle on this earth. And I know that, and I'm fine with that, but I don't use the title to lord it over people. It's who I am though. It's what I'm called to do. I'm called to plant. I'm called to build. I'm called to establish, and I'm called to put other people in their calls and destinies. This is what I am called to do. I know it. The fruit's there. Signs and wonders, heavenly atmospheres, worship songs birthing forth. These are all signs of an apostolic call. Okay. When you know you know, you know, all right? You know, you know, you know. But people need to stop titling themselves what they are not because guess what? When you walk in with a title that is not yours in the kingdom, but you're calling yourself that and heaven's not backing you, the second heavens, the spiritual principalities, guess what? They know. They know and they're going to send their foot soldiers after you to stop you and they know that you're outside of your spiritual jurisdiction they know that you're outside of your spiritual jurisdiction so these are just things to think about trust me i can tell you now some people are a little bothered on the inside i have people all the time well why can't everybody be an apostle prophet evangelist pastor teacher i don't know why can't everybody be a chef why can't everybody be a lawyer why can't everybody be a doctor that would make no sense the doctors need people to help the lawyers need people they need paralegals to help it's no different it's just different terminology kingdom it's just how it goes guys it's how it goes i'm not the one who puts the finger of god on people and says Oh, this and that. God speaks to me and tells me who people are. But God God confirms that in people's life. Fruit don't lie. Fruit don't lie. Okay? Everything's established upon the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. Okay? So, we need to stop labeling ourselves the wrong way because it gives spiritual principalities a legality to attack us. I'll say that again. It gives spiritual principalities a legality to bring spiritual warfare upon our life. Some of you are facing things because you have went into the wrong area. You have gone after something you have not been called to go after. Some people are just being rebellious. And at the end of the day, that's really what it is. And you're saying, why is the devil attacking me? Why is my life so horrible? Uh, and it's because you have gone and you have done something that you were not supposed to do. Sit down and pray. It's like this. If you go into sin, the wages of sin is death, right? What are you, you going to get? You're going to get death. Death's going to come out after your life. That's why we have to have eagle vision. We have to have understanding. We need to have a, a clear line of where we're going and what we're doing. We have to know the word of God. We have to know the Holy Spirit, okay? Just to read this Bible isn't going to give me spiritual direction all, all the time. I can read this Bible and have no spiritual understanding. I can just read it. I heard people all the time. They say this too. 
They say, I read the Bible and God don't speak to me. We'll get baptized in the Holy Ghost. That'll change everything. Did you ask for wisdom? Have you been filled with the Holy Spirit? Do you have the, are you getting some rhema? You know what I'm saying? No, people need to read it with the Holy Spirit. And when you read the word with the Holy Spirit, the word becomes alive and it gives you the direction that you need. God will never leave you nor forsake you. All right, I'll tell you this now, no matter if you're making mistakes and everything. So this is nothing about God leaving or forsaking you. This is you forsaking what you're really supposed to do. This has nothing to do with God. You are forsaking your call because you feel like you need to do this and you feel like you need to do that. Do what you're supposed to do. If you have a passion to see people saved, you obviously have an evangelistic thrust. If you love to give direction and you love to see people set free and you love to see things, uh, chains broke off and all that, you got a prophetic thrust. If you love to see things established, you have an apostolic thrust. If you have a heart full of compassion and mercy, you got a pastoral thrust. If you know people just need to know the word, they need to have a strong foundation, you got a teaching, you got a teaching thrust. Okay? But just because you have those things, just because somebody prophesies doesn't mean they're a prophet. Just because somebody plants a church doesn't mean they're an apostle. Okay? Just because uh, uh, somebody can gather people in the in their house for a meeting doesn't necessarily mean they're a pastor. Just because somebody wins one soul a day doesn't mean necessarily that they're an evangelist. Do the works of an evangelist. Do things like a pastor. Do you know prophesy like a prophet? That doesn't mean that you're in the office of that though. Okay. So these things need to be known. A lot of people, a lot of people, guys, don't understand these things. A lot of a lot of you young believers. Okay, a lot of you young believers, I'm still I'm still young myself. I mean, I've been doing it since full time since 2013. I've made a lot of mistakes. I've had to get a lot of understanding because of the Holy Ghost School of Hard Knocks. But a lot of young believers get into things that they shouldn't get into. They go through things that they don't need to go through. They take the hard way. They take the wide road to destruction to get back on the narrow road. You don't have to do that. Stay on the narrow road because on the narrow road is love, direction, life, intimacy, fruitfulness, prosperity, abundance is on that narrow road. The right road, though, the, the, the ways of this flesh, the ways of the world lead you to destruction. It leads, it, leads, it, leads it to destru leads you to destruction. So stay on the narrow road. Remember, guys, if you're just tuning in, make sure you hit the like button and share, share, share. Let's go ahead and get more eyes on this. This is actually this, this teaching has turned out to be really good because if you're really listening to this and you're, you're ingesting it, you're going to find out how to avoid some of the principalities in the area, okay? Some of the principalities that are that are in certain areas, you'll go, okay, this 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 right here is something that I, I, I don't need to mess with this. Now, you got to determine what's fear and faith. You see what I'm saying? This is why it's good to know the Lord. But why would you go over here? Why would you go over here and do something that you're, you know, there's no need to do? God God will handle it. Sometimes because our heart burns for people to be saved and set free, Ah, oh, I just want to see these people set free. We'll go into a place that God is good at saving people and God knows exactly who to send. <laughs> Did you hear that? God is good at saving people and God knows exactly who to send. Amen. He does. He knows how he knows who to send. I want to say this too. This just this just came into my uh, heart and I'm going to include it in this because I think it's good. When you try to Okay, I see, I see this today, and I wrote a post on this. The angels, right? We all have angels around us. Angels are given to us. Angels are assigned to us. So we all have angels. But I want to warn you, there's deceiving angels too. And you just don't go and make up an angel. Did somebody hear me? You don't go and make up an angel. That's not what you do. I'm seeing people making up angels in their imagination. And, and, and they, they think they're talking to them. Let me tell you something. If an angel's talking to you and it's sent by the present, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I feel that present. Oof. I think there's one here with me. Nah, I got a little intense. But you'll know. <laughs> you'll know. You don't have to make it up to look cool. Because what you'll do is you'll have an unauthorized angel hanging out with you, speaking to you. And you see this with people. You saw this with Joseph Smith. You saw this with Muhammad, and I believe even the Jehovah Witness founder. I believe all of these people, I may be wrong in the Jehovah Witness founder, but all of these people had the wrong type of encounter with the wrong type of angel. They didn't test who was coming to see them. You understand? Be careful, guys. Be careful going into those realms. 
If you're a prophet, this is very normal for you. If you're very spiritual, I mean, things happen. Angels are good. Love them. But be careful. Test the spirits, okay? Test them. Because if you're outside of, if you're trying to do something outside of your timing, even if you're a young prophet, even if you're, well, I won't say a young prophet because young prophets get, they get wild earlier. But a lot of young people see these prophets and these people and these apostles and these pastors speaking about their spiritual experiences and they try to force a spiritual experience. Ah, I felt the Holy Ghost on that. You don't have to force a spiritual experience. Did you hear me? God will give them to you. They will happen as you pursue the Lord. This, the angels will come. The spiritual visions will come. Things will come as you pursue the Lord. As you walk with Jesus, the spiritual experiences will happen. You don't have to force them to happen. Ask for them, but let the Lord bring them. Ask for them, but let the Lord bring them. I felt like I needed to say that for somebody because those spiritual principalities can send false things sometimes. We got to be smart. We got to be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove wise as a serpent harmless as a dove make sure you're authorized by the king of glory and by the people that you that mentor you make sure you're authorized to do what you do so that you don't come up against spiritual battles this is one of the ways i know that i'm doing what i'm supposed to do there is fruitfulness in what i do the things I touch, I boast in Christ. I boast not in my own ability. Nothing I do in the body of Christ is on my own accord. I cannot do anything without my Lord, my precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But watch my life and you see abundance. It's because I found my lane. I'm doing what I'm called to do. And as many people that have tried to destroy what I'm trying to do on this earth, they always fail because you cannot stop what God has appointed and authorized. Do you know you can try all you want to stop a man or woman of God? This is why I laugh at some of these people that are trying to call people witches and warlocks and stop people and the, the exposers. What are they doing? Are they really doing anything? Are they really stopping anybody? No, you cannot stop somebody that is authorized in the spirit. Only God himself can. God himself can pull down a prideful person, but they will get back up and continue their assignment because God has called them. The gifts and calls of God are without repentance. So even if the man of God looks like he's down or the, war, or the woman of God looks like they're down, they'll stand right back up. They will. I got hit so hard by the enemy. People never thought I would recover. Do I, can I tell you, my latter has been much better than my former. I was a true prodigal. I came back and God gave me the fat calf. I understand it. I understand it. You can't stop the assignment of a man or woman of God. They will do exactly what they're supposed to do until God said enough. God, God says enough. Until God says enough. So make sure that you're in, you're authorized by God. Make sure you know that you're called by God and make sure that you're seeing the fruitfulness of your call. Don't call yourself. Allow God to call you or allow an anointed, appointed man or woman of God to send you. Okay? And, and make sure people are in your life that can help direct you where you need to go. Make sure the right men and women of God are around you. People that, that have their best intentions uh, for you. Very important. Very important to make sure that you're authorized. So let's go ahead and let's recap really fast. Um, I want to bring this back up just to recap the, the five ways. For you guys who are just now turning in. I'm going to so, so five ways. Here's just five basic ways, guys, to deal with spiritual principalities according to the Bible. Number one, pray. Number two, submit to God. Number three, use the name of Jesus. Number four, put on the armor of God. Number five, walk in the spirit. So these are five ways right here that you can use to deal with spiritual principalities. Now, these five ways are for the second heavens, but also they can be for dealing when you're dealing with principalities and people, right? So, I mean, it, wor it works either way. 
Now, when it comes to dealing with principalities in person, that's a whole nother teaching. That's a whole nother thing. Um, so I'll have to do something different on that. But I just wanted to, I really wanted to come on here and just talk about this area because this seems to be a very controversial area. And you have people, well-meaning people, telling people to go up there and fight them. <laughs> I, I've had pastors get mad at me because I have this thought process. Remember, you you do what you want. You think the way that you want. I'm just over here delivering. This is this is my, which I believe God's. This is my God opinion, and I believe it's biblical. I believe it's biblical. So people get mad about this sometimes because they love going up there and fighting in the heavens. I've had people tell me they believe that they are going to put on some gear and they're going to fight the Nephilim when they return. I've had all kinds of people. I'm telling you, I've had people tell me some of the wildest stuff. Some of the wildest stuff. And I just say, you know what, brother? Amen. I'm not going to fight you. I'm not going to, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to go over here and try to disprove anything. I'm just here to tell you, this is my way of doing it. This is what works for me. If you like, if you like floating up into the second heavens and dealing with those uh, fallen, fallen ones, you go right ahead. But I'm going to tell you, tell you, man, some of them, some of them things come with some heavy heat. And I'm not trying to say that our, the Holy Spirit isn't greater or more powerful, but it is a war and war takes strategy. Even Jesus Christ. Now listen to this. Even Jesus Christ in the flesh came on the earth with a strategy. Did you hear that? He came on the earth with a spiritual strategy to beat the enemy at his own game. It's crazy, isn't it? So if Jesus needs a spiritual strategy, then don't you need a spiritual strategy? That doesn't mean you're not going to win, but don't you need a spiritual strategy when you come on the earth? I, I think so. When you're getting ready to do something on the earth for heaven, I think it's very smart to have a strategy when you're coming up against the enemy. A spiritual strategy is needed. Jesus needed a spiritual strategy strategy. Jesus needed a spiritual strategy. You will need one too. He was up against Satan himself, the fallen one, the one he saw fall like lightning. And he had a strategy in the spirit to win the battle that come through prayer, that come from sitting tears, tears of blood. Do you understand? He cried tears, it's, uh, uh, tears of not tears of blood, sweat of blood, sweat and tears, blood, sweat and tears. Literally, it was, was part of that strategy. Have you cried so much? Have you, have you, have you welled for the, for the area God's called you to? Have you said, Lord, I'm here. Here I am. Send me. You know, in 2015, I got on my knees and I screamed to God. I said, you listen to me. I said, God, I'm here. And if you don't use me, I'm going to come up there and get you. I was a bold, wild young man. I still am. But I said, Lord, use me as a matchstick of revival anywhere I go. And look at, look at today. He has honored the prayer. He is honoring the prayer. He is listening to his servants. He is listening to his sons and daughters. Have you asked the Lord? Or are you just going with the flow or motions? Are you just, just going with the motions of life, of spirituality? Are you just going to churches? just to go to church, just to have another service, or is your church, let me ask you guys something, let me ask you this, does, you, ask your, does your leader, the one who's leading you in Christ, do they know what they're doing? Do they know where they're going? Because somebody who does not know where they're going and does not know what they're doing cannot lead other people into knowing where they're going and knowing what they're doing. You understand, I've seen some people sometimes, they will sit under pastoral leadership for years and years and just waste away because they feel like that's just what they're doing. They're just there. No, God has so much more for us. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being a person in the church that is praying and interceding and doing little works. If that's what you're called to do, by all means do it. But make sure the person that you're under is going somewhere and the fruit of where they're going is showing. You see, you want to be around people that are going somewhere. You can go no further than the one who is leading you, the servant is not greater than the master. And if the servant, the pastor, is being led by the master, Jesus, then everybody is going to go somewhere. But a lot of times people say, 
You know, you know, if you hear your leader talking about burnout, talking about being tired, you know, not tired from travel, but, you know, just I'm tired of ministry. I can't wait to retire. I can't wait to to just, you know, just get out of this thing because, you know, I'm just, just tired. Time to, no, you don't retire. You don't retire in the kingdom of God, pastor, leader. There's no retiring. There's only refiring. Reinhard Bonnke said it best. He said this. He said, I am not going to ever retire. I am only going to refire. <laughs> he said, my flame never burns out. And I remembered what this man of God said. And I carry this with me in my spirit. The flame on my head is not going to burn out. And even when I die, it will still be burning because I never will die. I will always live because I'm alive in Christ. And a flame that is lit by the Holy Spirit can never burn out. Uh, <laughs> A flame that is lit by the Holy Spirit can never burn out. It can never burn out. There is nothing that can dim the flame upon my life. Some of us have bigger flames. Some of us have smaller flames, but we all have flames. And if the flame is lit by the Holy Spirit, it'll never burn out. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive and Jesus is king. I'm pretty sure a lot of people have been encouraged by this teaching. I'm going to do more teachings for sure in the future. But my goodness, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. It was, it was a good one. It was a good one for sure. And I believe you guys have gotten some information. If you have been blessed, can, can we put a number one in the chat just to show me that you've been blessed by this teaching? Can you go ahead and just let me know that God has blessed you on this wonderful, beautiful night for me, day, morning, whatever it is for you. There we go. Here, here comes the ones. One, 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 one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. I believe Jesus has been glorified tonight. I believe this teaching has, is going to edify even many people in the future that watch this. Amen. Come on, guys. One, one, one. Yeah. Soon, 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 Kimmy, we'll do it. Amen, amen. Yeah, I'm, I'm back, I'm back, I'll be teaching. Even when I go out there to uh, Europe, I'll try to find some time to, to, to continue to teach on these subjects and stuff, because they're good. I'm going to do another one probably on Friday. Friday, I'll release another teaching before I take off uh, on this call. Also, guys, we need you to sow into the work of the ministry, so please, by all means, the... Way to sow is in the chat. Some, many of you are forerunners, but you can give a little more. I want to go ahead and let you know I'm about to release a vision at the time of this video. I'm planning on producing TSNL Studio, okay, TSNL stu uh, Studios. And what is that's going to be is we're going to have a whole different live stream set up. I'm going to make a video on this and put it out there, and I'll show you guys how you can, uh, what, what it's going to look like, what the plans are and stuff. So you guys, if the Lord puts on your heart uh, to sow in that, into that. You can, but we got to move forward now. Okay, I like my little room set up and everything, but I'm ready to go further. I'm ready to be able to bring people in and just share testimonies and have a live, even have an, a live audience there when I'm home and stuff like that. And then after that, we'll, we'll, we'll go on to the next thing. But the next thing I want to do is TSNL Studios. So I'll let you guys know much, much more about that. But God has big plans. I have a word from a prophet that uh, I needed to do that. So I think I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to do that. Anyway, all right, guys, um, that's it. I hope you guys have been encouraged. You guys watching in the future, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being on here. By all means, guys, if you feel like this is a ministry you can grow and thrive in, go ahead and join. Go to the supernaturallife.org. Become a forerunner today. I promise you, I promise you, your life will change for the better, and we will be able to help you to learn who you are in Christ and get you into the call and destiny on our teachings, we got a whole uh, Forerunner School of Deliverance. We have the Certified Forerunner courses, which I will be updating because that's still got the videos of when I had my, you know, my long hair and everything, and I was going coming out of that crazy season. But the videos are still relevant and they still hold truth. But I'm going to be updating some things here um, in the very near future. But the SupernaturalLife.org become a Forerunner. Get involved. I want to be able to help disciple you guys and get you into your calls and destinies. TSNL Forerunner Cruise, you can go on the website. That's for forerunners only, guys, by the way. So 
If you're a forerunner in the ministry, you'll be able to come on the cruise. We have rooms reserved for so many people. You can have roommates if you need to, but we just, we have so many, we have a whole block and we're going to get people saved on that cruise ship. Maybe even bring a nice little uh, gift in the body of Christ to you guys too. I'm working on some things. Uh, the forerunner conference is about to be locked in too here very soon, guys. We're going to have some Man, I mean, we're going to have some good time at the Forerunner Conference. We're going to have some heavy hitters there. Trust me, your prophetic destiny will birth. Just know that. And I believe we're going to hit over 10,000 people coming to that. I believe in God for a mighty move of God. And I'll promise you this. I promise you this. Any revival that you come to, the presence of God will show up. We've been seeing, we've been seeing an increase in the miraculous at these meetings. And some of you guys have been a product uh, of that. So make sure that you guys get ready for that. That information will be coming out. Another little thing for you guys that are watching. My wife is kicking up. My wife, Heather, is pushing the women's aspect of TSNL now. She is taking on the women's mentorship. So my wife, Heather, is going to help all you ladies. I will be also releasing a flyer with a Zoom link. So that's ladies only. So gentlemen, if you try to go into the Zoom link, we're going we're gonna to have to get rid of you. And that's for everybody. So anybody that's a lady that wants to join that Zoom call tomorrow will be able to join it. My wife is going to be very on there. She's going to be teaching from experience and just telling you guys why uh, it'll be good to be part of the women's aspect of the forerunners. So I'm super excited for you guys to be able to experience that. But that's for anybody, anybody. So I'll be putting that link out uh, very soon. I'll be sharing it on social media. So, but anyway, guys, I think that's all I got right now. You want to be at an event? I'll be in Europe for all you guys over there in Europe that are watching this at the time of this video at April 19th at 11.05 p.m. my time. Um, I will be over there in, in Holland, Germany, Ireland, and the UK. And we are packed Guys, listen, we are packed. The place, the places are packed. Like, like we're literally in the UK. It's so many people coming that we're having to get a bigger venue. I mean, it's crazy. We're almost sold out of all things. Okay. I mean, it's, 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 it's wild. So we're having to increase the venues. That's how hungry people are for a move of God in the nations. Give God your yes. Become a part of this, man, and we'll send you on out there to do some revivals. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got some wonderful teachers in this ministry, wonderful fivefold that will change your life forever. We also have Infuse, the kids' ministry of TSNL, and we have Frontline Prison Ministry, and we have three churches, and we are planning a fourth church in Raleigh, North Carolina. If you want to know about the churches, also you can go on the supernaturallife.org. All right, guys. So that's all of the information I have. I pray that you've learned something tonight. And uh, I'll see you next time. I'll actually see you very, very soon. But for now, for now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, just for now, it is finished, man. <laughs> all right, guys. Hey, I love you all. Have a good night. Tr I love you tremendously, actually. I, I really do. I love this awesome community that God has trusted, with me on trusted me with online. And I'll see some of you soon in person. But anyway, you guys have an awesome night, morning, afternoon whatever it may be. God bless you all.